If you had stayed in Korea for many more years, what employment do you think you would have considered? I probably would have still just been streaming. So... Oh, okay, someone commented. Somebody commented on my... Instagram. She said something along the lines of, I knew you a long time ago, and... If I would have known that... Like... Talking about nerdy stuff was such a lucrative job, I would have done it too. She said something like that. And... It made me realize, like... People think, like... Cause I think people think that I'm super rich or something. Um... Cause... I, I guess, like, from her perspective, she probably saw me, like, before I moved to Korea. And then I suddenly moved to Korea from her perspective, right? So, from people that don't know me, they're probably in their mind is just thinking like, Oh, this rich girl just like... Like, started doing cosplay and started playing video games online and stuff. And then got a lot of money to move herself to Korea. Uh, but in reality, like... I didn't make a lot of money from streaming in Korea. I made about 500-ish dollars a month. I made enough money to pay my rent in Korea. So my studio apartment in Korea cost about $500 a month. And then... Uh, it, a little more. But basically... It was like around $500. It paid for my phone. It paid for electricity, water. It paid for like... Internet. And for my rent. So $500 is all I needed to make. So I streamed 8 hours a day every single day just so that I could pay my rent. And I only had to make $500 a month and that's what I made. For several months, um, I only made $500 a month. And then, and then in order for me to move to South Korea, I didn't get the money to move to South Korea from streaming. I worked a lot of jobs. I think a lot of people don't realize that when I moved to South Korea, I had to work a lot. So I saved up... I wanted to get a student vis visa and you need $20,000 in order to get a student visa. So I worked at GameStop full time and I pretty much saved up every single penny. I made $18,000 a year working at GameStop. I saved up every single penny from that. And then I also had some few other jobs at the same time. Like I was working just various other jobs at the same time and I saved up $20,000 in a year so that I could move myself to South Korea. So I was basically, like, I made $11 an hour working at GameStop, and I, like, basically, I didn't hang out with friends, I didn't, like, I'll, all I did was I would work out, I would go to work, I would work all day, I'd come back home, I'd work out, I'd go to work, work all day, and it was like a cycle that was, like, on repeat. So I think a lot of people don't realize, like, in order for me to move to South Korea, I had to work really, really, really hard. Um, it, I, I didn't make like any money from streaming at that time. I think I'm really, really good with money. <laughs> I think like money is just a tool, right? So like money can't buy you happiness. Um, at the time too, uh, when I was living in the USA before I moved to Korea, I was really depressed. I pretty much before I had the goal to move to South Korea, I was, uh, I, I was with my ex-boyfriend at the time, and I was in a really bad relationship. I realize now in retrospect that it was bad. Like, and this is not to say, like, he is bad, because I think... I think he himself is an amazing person. I just think him and I together are not a good per not a good couple. Like, we just don't mix. Like, like sodium and chloride, we're, we're like an explosive mix. Um, because, like... I was like so obsessed with like making sure he had like food, like lunch, dinner, and everything, breakfast before he would go to work and stuff. Like I was so obsessed with and he I would make sure I got him a monster like every single day. And he would always call me like a, a street rat for not having money to buy a house and stuff. He didn't have any money and he had a lot of money and he had rich parents. So like and then like for me, like, um, he like, so I would do all of this stuff. Like I would spend my own money to make sure he had like rock stars for work. I would make him dinner. I'd pack him lunch for work. Like I would do that every single day. One time I was so exhausted because I just had a horribly long day and I fell asleep. I forgot to make him lunch and I fell asleep and he just woke me up screaming at me, telling me to like, go make him a smoothie right now 
And I was like really shocked about that because he's never done that to me before. And then, and then it just started getting worse after that. Like after that, like I would have friends over. He would just yell at me in front of friends, like, like degrading me, like in front of people and stuff. And my friends, I lost friends because my friends were like, I'm not hanging out with you if your boyfriend's still around because he is a jerk and I am probably going to fight him if he yells at you again. <laughs> it was pretty bad. So, and I didn't realize cause like at the time I had zero self-confidence. I was really depressed. I was sleeping 18 hours a day. Like it got to the point where I would just go to work. I would come home and I would sleep until I went to work again. So like, I was like really in a place where I just didn't want to be anymore. Does that make sense? Like I was just like kind of just in limbo. Like I was like, I don't want to be here, but I have no choice. So I'm stuck here. Like I said, I don't think money buys you happiness. But if you manage your money really well, so when I was really depressed, this is what I was trying to say before. When I was really depressed in my old relationship, sleeping 18 hours a day and then working, um, I knew that I had to change something in my life. I really love South Korea. And so for me, I was like, okay, if I'm going to sleep 18 hours a day, if I'm going to be super depressed, if I'm going to live like this, um, maybe I could live like this, waking up super depressed every single day in South Korea, right? <laughs> that was my train of thought. I was like, okay, if, if life's gonna suck, if I'm gonna hate this, at least I could hate this in another country that I want to be in. So I was like, okay, I'll just work really hard. Work as hard as possible to save up my money to earn that $20,000 and then I can wake up depressed every morning in Korea. Actually, once I moved to Korea, I I was depressed for a little while because I was a little lonely. I didn't have friends. I didn't have family. It was like I left everyone I ever knew. Um, but then once I got used to it, I actually was really happy again. I made friends on Discord. I started streaming very regularly. I would be playing games and I would have the most fun I think I've ever had. I, I was super... I like... I am super happy. <laughs> No, yeah, I don't care about being rich. I just like if I manage my money well, I know I can do anything in life. It's just you have to know what you want, I think. And I think a lot of people, we don't know what we want. There's times where I don't know what I want, honestly. <laughs> money makes me happy. Is it the money though that makes you happy? Like when you get a hundred dollar bill in your hand, are you like, yeah, yay? Or are you happy at the thought of what that hundred dollars could get for you? You know? Does that make sense? Like, are you happy that you have the $100 or are you happy with the possibilities that the $100 brings? Because I think money will come and go and you can manage it really well. You can get a savings, you can have a 401k, you can have savings for the future or whatever. Um, but I mean, there's so many ways to spend $100. You know, the funniest thing? My sister, one time when we were little, my grandma for Christmas, she gave me and my little sister $100 for Christmas. I saved my $100 because I just didn't really care on, like, I didn't know what I wanted. I didn't want to spend it. So I just pretty much saved it until I figured out what I wanted and bought something. Um, my little sister, though, <laughs> I love my little sister so much. My little sister knew exactly what she wanted. And you know what she did with her $100? She bought $100 of hot Cheetos. I'm not kidding you. She spent her $100 on hot Cheetos. <laughs> she bought so many bags of hot Cheetos. And and then she ate herself sick. I, I think growing up when I realized that, I was like, okay, my sister knows what she wants. She knows what she will make her happy. And she spent all $100 making herself happy. And I'm like, I love that. Buying possessions makes me happy. Oh, that's another thing too. Does buying possessions make you happy? Or is it like, I know a lot of people get like adrenaline from spending money, you know? Like there's like excitement in tracking your package. There's excitement in buying something new. But I'm really bad with buying things because for me personally, I take so long to decide if I want to buy something that I'll talk myself out of it. Like, I'll be like, oh no, I don't need contacts. It's whatever. I don't need them. Like, I'll just, I'll just go blind. Whatever, whatever. 
And I will do that. I'll talk myself out of buying things that I actually really need. Um, so I have a hard time buying things I don't need because I have a hard time even buying things that I actually really do need. <laughs>